So in this video, I'm going to show a few examples of what causes bump steer in a vehicle with a front live axle, uh, which generation of our uh, Wrangler or XJ doesn't really matter. They all have the same basic setup. The big difference with bump steer is if you're driving over like a curb pothole and you feel the steering wheel shake back and back and forth, that's bump steer. It's very different than death wobble. Death wobble happens uh, usually at a higher speeds, usually closer to highway speeds. And it's usually triggered by worn out suspension components. Uh, that's a totally different item. We're not going to really go over that in this video. So I will show one example in this footage of death wobble from an outside the vehicle. Once you've driven a vehicle and you've, you've felt the death wobble, you will definitely know the difference between bump steer and death wobble. So this vehicle came in because of a really bad bump steer. It didn't take long when I was looking at it that I realized that someone had converted the drag link to be a high steer, but didn't do anything for the track bar. They left the track bar at the stock height, mounted behind the same bolt as the steering damper. So this means that the two bars, the track bar and the drag link are no longer parallel, and the drag link is almost perfectly level. So whenever the suspension goes up and down, there's a significant amount of bump steer in the steering wheel, which causes the vehicle to go all over the place if you're holding the steering wheel too tight. Yeah, I can't invert this one yet because this one's been converted to high steer. So we're gonna have to change the knuckle so that it can be reinstalled. The drag link can be reinstalled at the bottom so that the suspension geometry remains correct. If not, the other option would be to relocate the track bar here, add a bracket to raise the bar, uh, but that creates other problems that aren't required for a vehicle at this right height. There was also a little bit of play in the tie rod end on the passenger side, almost none on the driver's side. And at the same time, I also checked the pitman arm. That one is also pretty tight. So all these little things are compounding the problem. So I'll show a different scenario of having a, an issue with the geometry which causes bump steer the fun thing is is that we also have a an xj which has the same configuration for the front end uh, the xj still uses the factory mounting point for the track bar uh, both at the axle and at the frame and the drag link slash uh, tie rod linkage which is also known as a y system uh, still uses the factory routing, including the original Pittman drop bracket. That one has no bump steer when I go over obstacles, whereas the TJ does. And what ends up happening is the TJ now has over the knuckle steering, uh, which has benefits. Uh, for some reason, it has a drop bracket on the Pittman arm. So what happens is the angle of the drag link is quite a bit different than the angle from the track bar, which is attached lower on the axle and at almost the exact same height at the frame. And what that does is that as this tire goes up and down, actually even the other one, depending on, usually this will drop as that one goes down or up, the angle that this moves is different than the track bar which causes the drag link to push and pull on the pitman arm. And we end up seeing that as bump steer. So what I'm gonna do now is change to a stock pitman arm, which is gonna have a lot less drop. And that should in raise the pitman arm location and have roughly the same height difference between this point and the pitman arm and this point and the drag link which should greatly reduce bump steer and greatly improve road feel. So here we see a rough comparison of the existing one versus the stock one. So that should really help. And also because of the configuration of the this, of this steering, the track bar and that drag link are extremely close. So this will also help get them further apart. Since we'll be tearing apart the steering linkage, the drag link will actually have to be adjusted after changing the pitman arm. Pitman arm has a different drop. Uh, the drag link will actually have to get a little bit longer to adjust. So now that the steering wheel is, is straight, the tires are at the right location. When I button everything back up, the steering wheel will be at an angle. And then I'll have an idea of how much I have to adjust the drag link to have a steering wheel that's close to where it is right now. 
uh, this suspension kit included the pitman arm, but it said very clearly that if you're gonna use it to also drop the track bar, which wasn't done. So I started by removing the cotter pin for the drag link. Then I loosened the uh, nut just enough that it would still hold it as I tapped to the side of the pitman arm to, to release it. Uh, once it was broken free, then I removed the nut and lowered the pitman arm to the ground. Uh, on this one, it was a 33 mil fastener, got it zipped off pretty quick. Then I re-threaded the fastener to be able to slide on the uh, puller. And again, the goal there is to make sure that the, uh, as the puller is breaking it free, that it doesn't fall on, on the ground or on your face. And I always add a little bit of uh, lubricant, WD-40, whatever, on the threads of the puller before I start using it so it doesn't get jammed up. So the pitman arm that was on the TJ has a drop of roughly three and a half, maybe four, depending on how you measure it. But if we measure it the same way on the one that we'll be installing, it's roughly one and a half. So this means that there'll be two inches less drop than before, which should definitely help uh, get that geometry back in check. So the important thing to remember is if you have upgraded steering linkage, you may need to enlarge the hole here. So I do have a seven degree reamer, so I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time to enlarge this hole so that the uh, one ton steering linkage is able to reconnect to this pitman arm. So the goal is gonna be that when I'm done reaming this one, that there's roughly 40, uh, 44 or so millimeters of the reamer that is, is sticking out. If we look at it right now, there's not much. So I got a little bit of work ahead of me. The important thing with reamers is to make sure that you're going slow and a lot of lubrification so that you don't end up dulling the, the edge. So I got probably half an hour or so in front of me of, of doing this. So slow speed, a little bit of pressure, a lot of uh, lubricant so you're not overheating the pieces and slowly uh, I'll start seeing more and more metal shavings on the bit. Uh, definitely you don't want to rush this or you'll just end up with some dull bits. So to install the pitman arm, they're, they're keyed so there's only one way really to install it. So just make sure that you're not installing it in the wrong direction. Reinstall the lock washer. So these nuts, they get torqued to like 100, 90 foot pounds until it stops then I'll torque it by hand but before I torque it what I'm going to do is reinstall the drag link the reason for that is as I'm torquing this I don't want the box to turn and this will help hold it in place so it does take a fair bit of leverage to get it to click so now that the pitman arm is installed it's time to adjust the drag link so what I like to do is actually use another GoPro in the vehicle. So as I'm turning, I can see if I'm going in the right direction or not. And that saves me from having to get up and go check every single time I move it. So I'm going to go have a look, make any final adjustments I need, and then I'll lock the two ends. So now the geometry should be a lot better. Now that the pitman arm has less drop, the drag link is, should have a, a much more comparable arc to the track bar as the suspension goes up and down. And in this scenario, it also adds a lot more clearance between the track bar and that uh, joint at the top for that drag link where before they were extremely close and uh, we were talking millimeters worth of clearance. So I'm also gonna show a little bit of info on caster. Uh, caster is often something that's forgotten, which also really triggers uh, odd behavior in the front end. So definitely check that if, you, uh, if you're if you modifying your vehicle. It doesn't take much lift for that caster to be affected and you wanna make sure that stays in check. So I'll show an example here. So depending on how I, I position the angle finder on the top of the uh, C next to the ball joint, I get it roughly 5.6 degrees, which is usually pretty darn good. Uh, this Jeep does have adjustable uh, drop brackets. So if it needed more, it could have more added to it. So it's really important to remember that if you've modified your vehicle, the stock, just check everything is tight, doesn't work anymore. Uh, some shops are well aware of the trickle effect of modifying a part, relocating it. Uh, others will just check for play. 
So it's really important to understand that so that you end up with a properly uh, functioning vehicle, good geometry in your suspension, that things are properly lined up and that will give you a good road feel. And it's totally possible to have a modified lifted Jeep that drives as good, if not better than stock by having the right components, with the correct geometry uh, to make sure that it's true. So hopefully this helped. Uh, definitely uh, double check that drag link. Uh, it's the most common part that gets changed that affects your bump steer. Unfortunately, not enough people are aware of this and they just blindly install uh, lift kits without understanding the whole sequence. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.